Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's try to determine the scalar equation of a plane in three-dimensional space. We have the same drawing as we had last time. Here's we have a plane, we have a known point with the coordinates x, y, and z sub naught. We have an arbitrary point with the coordinates x, y, y, and z. And we have, of course, the normal vector to define a plane. You have to have a vector which is orthogonal or normal to the plane. Let's assume that the orthogonal vector n has coordinates a, b, and c. Actually, not coordinates, but has the values for the x, y, and z direction as a, b, and c. a, b, and c, of course, are the scalars of the vector. From the last video, we realized that the vector equation is the normal vector dotted with the difference between the position vector to the unknown point and the position vector to the known point, which can be written in either one of those two forms. Using that, let's go ahead and find the equivalent for the r vector. We can say that the r vector, the position vector to the arbitrary point x, y, z, can be written as vector x, y, and z. And we can find the r sub naught vector by taking the coordinates here, x sub naught, y sub naught, and z sub naught. Now let's go ahead and use this form of the equation right here. We're going to take the normal vector and have the dot product with r minus r sub naught. Let's see what that looks like. We know that's equal to zero. The normal vector would be a in the i direction plus b in the j direction plus c in the k direction and we're going to have the dot product with the difference of those two vectors that would be x minus x sub naught x minus x sub naught in the i direction plus y minus y sub naught in the j direction plus z minus z sub naught in the k direction and that must equal zero. Now remember what a dot product is. You can do a dot product by simply multiplying the x coordinates, the y coordinates, and the z coordinates together of the two vectors and then simply adding them together. Which means that the dot product cannot be written as a times x minus x sub naught plus b times y minus y sub naught plus c times z minus z sub naught and that must therefore equal to zero. Hmm. Now we can simplify it maybe just a little bit more. This is one form of the equation. We can leave it like that or we can simplify it a little bit more. What we can do next is of course realizing that x sub naught, y sub naught and z sub naught are known quantities which means I can write this as ax minus a times x sub naught plus by minus b times y sub naught plus cz minus c times z sub naught and this is equal to zero and I'm realizing that this is simply a constant this is simply a constant and this is simply a constant I can add all that together and call that d which means I can now write the equation as ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to zero that now becomes the new form of the equation understanding that d is equal to the negative of the sum of those that means a x sub naught plus b y sub naught plus c z sub naught if I realize that this is the value of d that goes in the equation over here then I can write the equation for a plane in three-dimensional space as follows as far as that. Notice that a, b, and c come from the normal vector. x, y, and z are simply arbitrary location of any point on the plane and d is determined by knowing a known point on the plane like this. And that's how we write a scalar equation of a plane in three-dimensional space.